Hi, good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining me. As usual, on this Thursday evening, I'll be doing a two-part episode in the sense that this is a webinar. And the first part of the webinar, as normal, I share it generally. So some of you on YouTube are able to see this. But after I've completed the first section, then it will be only people who have registered for the webinar who will be able to hear. Why do I do that? Largely because it gives me a little bit more freedom to be quite explicit in what I say. I have to be less concerned that someone may be um, worried about what I say. And so I prefer to handle it in the context of a webinar and answer directly questions as best as I can. And so for those who are joining me um, on YouTube, please remember to register for the webinar for the next one. There is another one coming up shortly with regards to dementia. So if you're interested, look out for that. Now, in terms of what we're going to be talking about this evening, let's get into the presentation. So here we are um, talking about the infertility nightmare, the impact of COVID infection and vaccination. Now, let's be clear, I'm a physician. I'm not an obstetrician uh, or gynecologist. It's not my area of expertise to talk about infertility normally. Where I'm focused is that there are some very unique patterns about COVID-19, COVID-19 infection, and my research into autoimmunity that gives me an insight into what I expect to happen. Now, please be clear, what I am concerned about is not pretty. I don't mind being wrong. And so I approach things from the, uh, the perspective of a SWOT analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. I'm talking about the threats here. I'm talking about the things that if you don't anticipate will catch you off guard. Always best that they don't happen, but not to consider them to me, in my mind, is foolhardy. So let's get started. First thing in terms of the full presentation, it will probably take us about an hour to go through for those who are on the webinar, understanding the fundamentals of fertility relationship between COVID vaccines and fertility. This is my research. Again, autoimmunity connections and the potential solutions going forward. Those are the key things that I want to focus on. And I'll just be sharing some ideas that I think are very, very important about what needs to happen or what we should look out for. Let's start with some basics. And this is just the basics about how the fertility works. And let's be clear, fertility is an example of perfection. It is so well balanced. And it's not until you look at the details of the physiology that you realize that getting pregnant is not easy. There are so many things that need to occur in order for someone to get pregnant. So whilst there is concerned about population growth, every Pregnancy, every child is a remarkable gift when you look at it from a scientific point of view. Infertility is a disease characterized by the failure to establish a clinical pregnancy after 12 months of regular and unprotected sexual intercourse. And so this is the general definition that I've gotten from the paper uh, that's quoted below about infertility. And it makes sense. Many people who are really struggling to get pregnant um, will oftentimes, after about 12 months, be referred to a specialist clinic. This is just the general principles, the anatomy of the female reproductive tract. Uh, this here is a woman. Uh, this is the vagina. Just here is the cervix. This is the uterus cut section. And here are the fallopian tubes. And then you have the ovaries. And that's just the basis of the fundamentals of the female reproductive tract. Then we have, and we'll go into this in a little bit more detail, the hormonal changes that occur around the menstrual period. And I, I'll just highlight here ovulation. And that's a critical part of fertility because if it doesn't happen, the person can't get pregnant. And so what we'll be focused on is how can that those changes in hormones be affected in relation to infection and or vaccination. 
Again, the endometrial lining of the uterus. This is important because of the links to menorrhagia. And I'll be sharing some of the papers, which is talking about ex excessive bleeding in women who had been vaccinated. And the fact that the scientific community, I don't think, paid enough attention to this. This was left as an issue, as just a random thing. I cannot think of anything more significant because of the sensitivity of these hormones and the balance with regards to um, the uterine um, the uterine lining and bleeding, it indicates something quite unusual is going on. And for the scientific community to overlook this as being just another thing, I think was a mistake, but time will tell. And then in terms of male reproductive anatomy, you can see here, this is a penis, testicles, um, and essentially, this is a cut section of the testicles showing all of the different parts of it. And one of the things that we're going to highlight is that um, there is a blood testes barrier. So actually, the sperm is kept very separate from the body. The, technically, the, the immune system of the body doesn't know it's there. And this is because it's immunologically different, but that's a, a separate point. And this is why immunity and autoimmunity is such a critical part of the puzzle. And finally, what I'll be sharing is an updated slide showing the trends with regards to live births, Northern Ireland. And this is an example of, this is just one country, but people should be asking the same questions wherever they are in the world. This is an important question to look at trends, and we'll be looking at that in the next section 